I'm the calculus professor and today we'll be talking about basic approaches to integration. Welcome back. Today we'll be talking about section 7.1 on basic approaches to integration. Uh, <clears throat> So we'll, let's start with problem number 15. And in problem 15, I just want to evaluate this indefinite integral of e to the x over e to the x minus 2e to the negative x dx. <clears throat> All right, so what I'm going to start out with here is I'm going to start out with a u substitution. And there are a couple different things here that I could uh, maybe try as a U substitution. One of them works well for me. The one that I'm going to use is I'm going to let U equal E to the X. And the reason why I want to choose E to the X and not E to the negative X or any of that is because when I take the derivative of U, I get E to the X DX, which is exactly what I have on the top of that integral. So uh, I'm able to just put du in as the top of the integral, and that seems like a good thing. So now if I make this substitution, let's write it down here, I get the integral of, on top I just have du, and on the bottom I have u minus 2, uh, u to the minus 1. All right, so uh, this is my new integral, and now let's see what we can do with that. Well, u to the minus one is, same as, is the same as two over u, so maybe I should write it that way instead. So let me rewrite this. This is equal to the integral of du over u minus two over u. Now what I'll do is, let's get a common denominator for these two guys, combine them into one fraction. If I do, I get the integral of du over, I'll multiply the top and the bottom of this u by u, and so I get u squared over u minus 2 over u. Now I can rewrite again, this is the integral of du over u squared minus 2 over u. Now we can flip and multiply this thing and we get the integral of u over u squared minus 2 du. But now if we look at this guy, this is a very uh, this is very close to being a natural log. And what do I mean it's close to being a natural log? I mean that if I take the derivative of the bottom, I get the derivative, uh, I, I get the top. So if the derivative of the bottom is a top, is the top, then I just get natural log of the absolute value of the bottom. It's close, but not quite. So right now, I, if I take the derivative of the bottom, I get 2u. That's not what I have on top, but I could make it that way by putting in a 2 on top and putting a 1 half outside. Now, if I take the derivative of the bottom, I get the top, which means that the antiderivative is the natural log of the bottom. So let's write that in. I still have this 1 half, but now I get ln of the absolute value of what was on the bottom which is u squared minus 2, and then I have a plus c. Now I need to plug back in for u. u, we said, was e to the x, so we can rewrite this as this is 1 half ln of the absolute value of e to the x squared. Well, if I square e to the x, I get e to the x times e to the x, or e to the 2x minus 2 plus c. And this is my antiderivative. 